Welcome and please join us in our opening song. great to be here. My name is Chris Mullen, and I'm your platform person for today. Uh, I want to just welcome everyone here in person and those online joining us. Welcome. What a beautiful weekend. What a beautiful weekend. I hope some of you all got out to the Blueberry Festival. Maybe I did. Maybe to the beach or just in the yard, in the garden. Uh, grateful for this day. Thank you all for being here. I want to welcome, um, or not welcome, but I want to thank our volunteers up here doing music, our director, Katie Deese, and also our soloist for today, Megan Golden. And also joining us is Re Reverend Catherine Klein. And please help me open with our statements uh, of being. Together, there is only one presence and one power active in my life and in my life. God, the good omnipotence. And our three affirmations, please, together. I am a beloved expression of God. I am here for a holy purpose. I'm at the right place, at the right time, right now. And we're going to bring up our singer for the opening song. Forgiveness and 
Good morning, everybody. Here, let me introduce you first. Okay, you can introduce me. Okay, so we got our guest, Reverend Catherine Klein, here coming in. I just want to give you a little bit of um, bio on her. Um, she was ordained in 2000. She served at Tulsa, Oklahoma for four years as a minister, uh, in Greensboro, North Carolina for 10 years, and she just served at the Crystal Coast of Unity for nine years. Uh, she has three grown sons, six grandchildren she's very proud of um, she uh i got to talk to her for a little while um, prior to uh, you know today's service and we have a lot in common she entered the mystery uh, the ministry at the age of 53 in uh, the seminary and uh, and it's kind of cool because we were talking about how everything in our life and our life experiences leads us unfolding to our highest step good, by step, right? where we need to be, yeah. perfect divine order. So without any further ado, I'd like to um, introduce Reverend Catherine Klein. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and speaking of that little story you just told, I went to seminary the minute that one, there's my youngest son, John, and my grandson, Blake, and his beautiful wife, Jessica, he walked down the aisle with Jessica, and I took off for school. That's how that worked. <laughs> so happy Father's Day, right? Yeah. Today we celebrate our fathers and all the father figures who have helped us grow into the people we are. We also celebrate the divine masculine in both men and women. I've noticed that divine masculine is not a term we hear as much as we probably should these days. See, the ma sacred masculine within is what reminds us that we are at cause in our lives. It is conscious 
of our innate God-given power. And it tells us again and again that we are the creators of our lives, of the experiences of our lives, and not victims of circumstance. That's one of the greatest things unity ever taught me. I don't know about you, um, but it is a totally life-changing idea. See, the divine masculine within is the action principle, the outflow of energy that creates and builds. I think of divine masculine as love in action, love that leads with benevolence and integrity, love that builds nations and cities and organizations and families, love that protects the vulnerable. The divine feminine generates emotional depth, right? While the divine masculine is grounded in right, level-headed thinking. Feminine power builds loving relationships, while masculine energy focuses on mission and purpose. Our co-founder, Charles Fillmore, called the powers of love and wisdom the sons of thunder. He said that love without wisdom can be foolhardy. Foolhardy. Any women have been there? Yeah. And that wisdom without love can be cold-hearted. But when masculine and feminine energies are in balance within us, he said there is no limit to the manifestation of good that we can produce in this world. Healthy masculine energy allows us to do what needs to be done to bring our dreams into form. Without it, our heart's desires and our best intentions might never come to fruition. Now, of course, unspiritualized, immature masculine power, which we tend to see a bit of these days, can be terribly destructive. God knows. Contrary to the world's limited idea of male strength. Sacred masculine energy is trustworthy and healing and solid. It cannot be provoked, tormented, or teased into useless aggression or bloody battles. Emotional rhetoric may fly, this is what I learned from my husband, emotional rhetoric may fly all around it, usually generated by me, but the divine masculine is not reactive. It is strong and steadfast. Jesus was the perfect example of heart and mind in balance. His feminine heart made him a caring and gentle son. He defended the abused, rushed to the side of friends in need, empathized with the fears of his disciples, and wept over the inability of Jerusalem to hear his message. Remember that? Yet Jesus also hummed with sacred masculine energy. He called out the religious hypocrites in the temple. He chastised abusers. He threw the merchants out of the temple. And he challenged his disciples when their faith wavered. But what I think I, I just admire the most is that he was not afraid to face down his own demons. I don't know how many Bible stories you guys are into, but I love some of these New Testament stories, especially this one, about the showdown between the devil and Jesus in the desert. Before he went into public ministry, Jesus made a circle of stones, in the, and then he sat in the middle of the circle, and he fasted for 40 days. Okay, I haven't made it for four. He did it for 40. In this way, he disciplined his body so that his physical energy could recede and his spiritual energy could surge forward. The devil, thinking him in a weakened state, was determined to bring him down by appealing to first his ego the devil within him said, you don't need God to do great work. You can do it all on your own. Every, anybody else ever been stuck in self-sufficiency? <laughs> right. And through his greed, 
The devil said, bow down and worship me, and I'll give you all the power and wealth you have ever desired. And through his pride, the devil said, go ahead, throw yourself down from the top of the temple. And when you don't die, people will know that you are invincible. Ego, greed, and pride. These manifestations of fears are the sidetracks, the distractions that interfere with the development of our divine masculine. And do you remember what Jesus said to those demons within him? Get thee behind me, Satan. And then he went out to do what he called his father's business, his father's business, which was his sacred mission in the world. Now, I'm sure most of you know the beloved Bible story of the prodigal son. It's a metaphysical gold mine. And full, it's got so much wisdom in it, I find myself returning to it again and again. But just to remind you, the story opens with a young man, probably about, no, oh, younger than you, Blake, who is itching for his freedom. He wants to find out what the world out there has to offer. And so he asks his father to give him his inheritance, which is a nice way of saying, please finance my search for all the sexy stuff out in the world that I think I'm missing, right? The writer of the Gospel of Luke tells the story in a rather understa understated and unemotional way, so we need a bit of context to understand the audacity of the young man's actions. The son's insistence on leaving home would have been seen as a heartless betrayal of his family, his religion, his culture, all to wander off in a sordid world where sacred traditions and values mean nothing. In the Middle East, even today, that would be an unforgivable act. But to add insult to injury, demanding his inheritance while his father is still alive was tantamount to wishing his father dead about the most disrespectful thing any Jewish son could possibly do. Okay, you say, but in contemporary Western culture, that doesn't feel like such a big deal. Kids leave home every day, they go live in a foreign culture, they go kind of wild, and they spend a ton of their parents' money. Are you with me? It's called going off to college. <laughs> Maybe so. So I think we got to take a little deeper look. Metaphysically, leaving home represents separation from one's own soul and spirit. It's believing that the material, material world holds the secret that will relieve our restlessness and our dissatisfaction. That there is some kind of magic key out there that can unlock all the prosperity and happiness that we've been dreaming of. Do you remember how the father in the story reacted to his son's demand for his inheritance? He quietly gives him the money and bids him farewell. His masculine power of wisdom guides him to let go and allow his young son to find his own way, as risky as that might be. Maybe the young man has to find out for himself what life is like out in that wild world. Maybe he has to make his own mistakes in order to learn and grow. One of my famous writers um, is actually a Unitarian, Parker Palmer. And in his wonderful book called Let Your Life Speak, he says that all too often, the path to humility goes straight through humiliation. Are, are, are anybody, uh, mm. this was certainly the case for the prodigal son, who after squandering all the money on wine, women, and stuff, ends up working as a pig feeder. Gross as it may sound, he was so hungry, he was forced to eat pig slop himself. He has hit bottom. Even being in the proximity of pigs is about as low as any Jewish boy could possibly go. 
And then the parable says something that I find absolutely stunning. It says, he came to himself. He came to himself. This was the critical moment. We know what this moment is like. The moment when we face the truth about what's going on and what's going on with us. That, that, that our plans and dreams are failing. That our justifications don't work anymore. And our bravado doesn't hold up anymore. And our masks don't fool anyone anymore. And the freedom we wanted, all that stuff that we thought was the answer, has not made us as happy as we thought it would. In this moment, the prodigal son chooses life. He chooses the way out of humiliation, and that way is humility. He has made terrible, costly mistakes. He's lost everything. He is starving and friendless. But when he comes to himself, he remembers what is real and true, that he is still his father's beloved child. Nothing he could ever do could change that. And so he finds the courage to return home and ask his father's forgiveness. The father in our story is a beautiful example of divine, ma divine masculine. I want you to just take a moment. This is a, um, a print of a famous Rembrandt painting. Can you see the kindness in the father's face? It's, it just always touched me when I saw that. Remember, the son has insulted him deeply. So here's the scriptural account of what the father does. Even though he had all these choices when it came to dealing with his son, he could have been outraged by his demand for his inheritance and refused to give it and possibly destroyed his relationship with his son forever. He could have given the money, but grudgingly, and then disowned him when he made a mess of everything. He could have suffered and worried every moment the young man was away. And he could have made him beg for forgiveness before letting him come home. But he does none of these things. Here's what the scripture says about it. So the young man set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. And so he ran out and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to his father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father says to his slaves, quick, bring out a robe, the best one we have, and put it on him and put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate for this son of mine that was dead is alive again. He was lost and now he's found. See, the father focuses solely on the light. When his son returns home, he celebrates. See how the light, he brings the light down on the father. Right? It's that simple to him. Even though the young man still smells a lot like a pig, even though the money is squandered, even though the elder son is jealous and sulking out in the yard, the father remains focused on one thing. My son was lost and he has returned home. Obviously, the father in our story is a wealthy and powerful man. He has land and service and, and servants and status. Most people think the most important point of the story is his forgiveness of his son. But even this is not the most remarkable thing to make note of. You see, the father had nothing to forgive because he never judged his son to begin with. In the new earth, 
Eckhart Tolle recounts a story about the great philosopher and teacher Krishnamurti. Krishnamurti for 50 years traveled around trying to convey in words that which really had no words. At one point in the later part of his life, he surprised his audience by asking, do you all want to know my secret? Everyone became alert, even those that had been following him for 20 or 30 years. Finally, after all these years, the master would give them the key to understanding. This is my secret, he said. I don't mind what happens. This is the secret and the most remarkable characteristic of the divine masculine. He has what Tolley calls a healthy relationship with the present moment. He accepts life as it is and people as they are. But you know, the parable of the prodigal son is perhaps more than anything a call for us to step into our destiny. The young man is willing to come back home and in exchange for security, live as a hired servant in his father's house. But the father would not allow his son to play small. The welcome he gives him is the welcome given to an heir apparent, the one who's destined to become the father. See what becoming the father is all about to me. And it's a tall order, I get this, but it's an ideal and it's something we work toward. It's about spiritual maturity. At last, we embrace our wholeness. We stand clear-eyed in the present moment. Just that alone challenges me. From a place of inner balance and stability, we're available to support the growth of younger souls who cross our path. And finally, we are free to be who we are without apology to anyone, to walk in confidence, to follow our hearts and live without regret, and free to offer our gifts to the world without fear of rejection. For men, and this is a big leap, to embrace the sacred feminine and the women in their lives and be this compassionate healing presence in the world. This Father's Day, as we celebrate the great men in our lives, let's also rekindle within ourselves awe and gratitude for the immense, creative, protective, sustaining power of Father God. Let's worship and praise the power that created the stars and the planets and the plants and the animals and the sun and the moon, the power that holds the whole universe in balance. And let's not forget to celebrate the divine masculine within ourselves, that we're both deep feelers and active doers, creative creators of our own lives and sources of faith and encouragement for everyone who crosses our path, the divine masculine. Thank you for listening, and God bless you all. I'm so glad to be here. Now let's pause and get ready for some time of meditation. How about that? And so we can just relax. Close our outer eyes, perhaps. And take a slow, deep breath. We come here today seeking conscious contact with our God. And so we take yet another nice, deep, cleansing breath. And as we follow the breath, we notice that our body begins to relax. We come together this morning to claim and celebrate the spirit of God that lives within each and every one of us. We spend time in the stillness because when we listen, we can almost hear its voice 
calling us to a higher vision, a more expansive thought, and deeper compassion. No matter how far we've wandered, no matter how separated we may feel, we can always come home because the Father within each of us is always ready to welcome us with open arms. They say that in the Father's house there are many rooms, a room of peace, a room of healing, a room of forgiveness, of love and of joy. So I'd invite you, which of these rooms would you like to sit in this morning? Peace, healing, forgiveness, love, joy, Anyone is available to you. In your mind's eye, you can see that there's a door in front of you. You open it and enter into your room. Inside, there is a comfortable place to sit and allow yourself to become still. As we move into the silence this morning, let's affirm silently, I am peace. I am love. I am healed. Whatever we desire is right here, right now. So let's savor this moment by spending a little time in the silence. As we once again become fully aware and awake to our surroundings, we do so knowing that we could take the experience of these last couple of moments with us. We can return to our room whenever we choose to. It's only a heartbeat away after all, or a thought, or a prayer. Look, you and I, we often get lost in, in the external world and all that busyness and all those demands. Sometimes we even get thought in, lost inside our own minds, if you know what I mean. But not to worry, because it's all okay. The Father within patiently waits for our return, eager to welcome us home for this truth and for the awareness of this truth, we are deeply grateful people. And so it is.
Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kathy. Thank you very much. Powerful message. Happy Father's Day. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to, uh, now it's time to, if you can support us here, to really appreciate what you can give to help us bring you know, spiritual nourishment to our community by supporting our church. And we can do that by uh, donating on, on uh, Unity of Wilmington's website, also on Facebook, Venmo, and the baskets that are being passed now. And uh, also, if you would like, you could like us on Amazon Smile, and we'll get a donation from that, too. <clears throat> could we uh, please help me with the uh, blessing of our uh, tithe uh, together? Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. Thank you. Our soloist.
Catherine again for a powerful message. Can you get it? Thank you. And uh, could we close with our, um, our prayer, Aramaic prayer, please? Together? Father, Mother, Further and Forever of all, create a space inside us and fill it with your presence. Let oneness now prevail. Your one desire then moves through ours as energy fills all forms. Give us this day our physical and spiritual nourishment. Entangle the knots of error that bind us as we release others. Don't let appearances make us forgetful of source, but free us to act appropriately from the age to harmonies of life. And may these statements be fertile ground from which our future grows. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay. It's time for announcements. I <clears throat> just want to remind everyone that we have a prayer box. Teresa, would you like to say something? Go ahead. I didn't talk with him before. <laughs> Go ahead. So I'm the announcement for the prayer uh, partner. I'm the coordinator for prayer partners. And Chris is also one of the prayer partners who will be over by the prayer room this morning if you would like a prayer. Mm -hmm. Unity, um, one of our principles is affirmative prayer. And what that is is um, positive, uplifting words when we face life challenges, such as a loss or an illness or looking for a new job. Sometimes we, our minds don't, um, it reminds us, affirmative prayer reminds us of our divinity through positive words and um, I can't believe how nervous I was doing so well. <laughs> um, so anyway, we are the prayer partners and we would love to share prayer with you if you need some support and reminder of your divinity because through that divinity, it, it, it gets you out of your head into your heart through affirmative prayer and that's where we draw connected to spirit. Mm -hmm. um, we have prayer um, request forms over on the table and for those of you online, if you go to unityofremington.com, you will click on the prayer box and we will get your request. Be sure to write legible and put your name on your request. Your name is very, has a high, it's a high, a high vibration and it goes mm -hmm. along. It helps us as prayer partners to know your name. You don't have to put your last name. Um, and if anyone would like to be a prayer, a prayer partner, please come and talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. <clears throat> so like there's a prayer box up here. So we do 30 days here. We send it to Unity Village for 30 days to be prayed at Silent Unity. Um, <clears throat> also, I want to remind everyone you can sign up for the e-blast, the Unity of Wilmington in the back. We have a sign up to keep, keep informed of what's going on here and the events that are going on. Um, any special events going on? Do we have a board announcement, one minute board announcement? I'm going to supersede Myron. My heavens, I got up here first. <laughs> uh, I'm Lainey Mauger, and I'm on the board. And that last note down there, we're looking for an education coordinator. As we have all been saying, we want young people here. And young people, I have to move over this way, according to the man uh, <laughs> who's up there signaling me, that we will be hopefully growing our congregation. And one way to grow a congregation is to have young people, starting with babies and infants and young children as they go to school. One of the things that I have been envious of is people who grew up in unity, um, which is a terrific thing, which I didn't get to do. But we want to do that here. To do that, we are going to open up our 
youth education department with the nursery, hopefully in September, sooner if we can get a coordinator. The coordinator will be one who oversees the volunteers, the curriculum, making sure somebody is there every Sunday to teach, to mind the children for the infants and stuff. So if you're interested, contact Wendy and she'll get you the information and get in touch with me and we will go from there. But please, we need a coordinator who is gonna be the big shot of the deal. And we also need volunteers. We'll need, de and it's a dedicated position. It will be for one year, probably renewable. But it's something that you're gonna get involved with every Sunday because you're gonna have to be here because we'll have kids here every week. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and just remind everyone that we're gonna meet across the hall for hospitality. And uh, any other announcements? Okay, do you have a closing song? <laughs>